Hello, my name is Nan Marks. I have an MSW. I'm a psychotherapist, a family therapist, and former special ed teacher. You could say my entire career life has been about the healing arts. That's why I'm so interested in such issues as seniors being disconnected with the world. We know that there is no simple solution for this issue for older adults. For example, today I will interview Philomena. I know and ask, when was the first time she recognized that was, excuse me, there was a change that somehow her parents had changed? And um, she, she could have felt it or seen it visually, but something just wasn't the same anymore. Um, so, Philomena, could you tell me a little bit about when you first recognized there was a change with your parents? Well, the first thing that happened was my father's um, mobility started to go. Uh, his legs got weak and he wasn't able to walk on his own and he needed a walker now to walk. And um, his other s sensory, uh, like his touch and feel, he, he, he just um, had a neurological uh, damage. So it uh, became hard for him to do anything for himself. So now my mother is basically taking care of him and doing almost everything for him. So that was a big change. Yeah. So, so she's like, his wife is the caregiver. Yes, she definitely is his caregiver, full time, 24-7. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's and hard on her too. I'm sure. And she's like 77 herself. And now she's starting to feel under the weather herself and feeling weak. So, you know... I'm getting scared now, too, about her and how we're going to manage. I understand totally. Um, and did you ever uh, uh, feel that you needed to talk to, like, a quote-unquote gerontologist or a quote-unquote professional at all? Yes, actually, he has been to one uh, a few years ago, and we've been to the gerontologist a few times. Dr. Vargas, she's an excellent doctor at St. Joe's. Um, but right now... There's not much that they can do for him medically. It's just a matter of keeping him comfortable and and him doing some little exercises to keep so his um, he doesn't get atrophy. His muscles don't atro atrophy so quickly. So you know he, now he does like few exercises in the morning and uh, tries to walk as much as he can with his walker. So yeah, but I think now it's time for my mother to go see Dr. Varga because. Yeah, she's having problems now herself. So, so being an adult child uh, that loves their parents, it's very hard to see your parents, in a sense, switch roles. I mean, in a sense that they're very become dependent on you. So, Philomena, you were sharing with me about your concern about mom. Yeah, mom is going to need some extra care now herself. She's getting weak and. Uh, it's, it's hard for her to keep going up and down those stairs, and uh, she's uh, she keeps wanting to cook her meals downstairs and bring it up to my father, and uh, she's stuck in her old ways, and uh, I think it's time for her to start cooking upstairs and just not having the up and down anymore because it's really hard on her legs and her body now and her back, and she gets very tired. So do you feel that uh, in some way... Um, it's hard for them to make a change. You may know that something's not good to do anymore, but they are either their cultural background, gender, whatever, thinks that, no, I have to keep doing this this way because I've always done it this way. Yes, it's... Uh for our... Uh, I'm Italian, and our culture, it's... Uh, we don't put our parents in um, nursing homes or long-term care and unless it's very, very necessary. So they they want to stay and live in their house as long as possible, like to the end. And my father wants my mother to live there after he goes until she dies. So I feel like I'm going to have to end up being a full-time caregiver for her in a few years because um, there's going to be no one else um, to take care of her. So... Yeah. So you're you're an only child then? Oh no, I have four brothers, but it's usually up to the woman, like the girl in the family, to take care of the parents, you know. And my brothers are scattered around Toronto and mm. Orangeville, so they're far farther away. So I'm 
you know, and I owe them a lot, and uh, so I, I'm going to have to step up and do it, yeah. You said I owe them, like O-W-E? <laughs> well, they've done a lot for me, and uh, I feel a sense of, I don't know, I just want to pay back some of the love that they've given me and support. So um, I understand what you're saying. I want I want to make sure she's comfortable, and uh, but it's going to be difficult because I, I I wonder if they're going to accept the care. Like I think it's easier for a parent to get help from say a a um, personal support worker than to say maybe get a bath from their child. I mean some people are, you know, they might be embarrassed or ashamed. You Absolutely. know. Absolutely. So we'll see what happens with that. Right now, my father's getting a personal support care worker coming in twice a week to give him baths. And so maybe my mom might need that soon as well. Um, my dad, my dad has a really good one now. He has a male support worker, which Wonderful. which was better for him because he didn't like the ladies. Um, not because of embarrassment or shame, just they the, the male is... Um, he can talk to the male better, and he, okay. you know, they, they, they joke around and they have fun with each other. And uh, he's a really, he does a great job. My father is like so amazed, like, oh, he massaged my head so it was so great, you know, yes. you know, he's really, he really likes this, uh, this personal support care worker, and we get him regularly, so it's really, we're really lucky. You're very lucky. Yeah, and we even feed him. My, my mom always feeds him or gives him a cup of espresso <laughs> after the, Just after he gives them all wash and, or cookies and stuff like that. lasagna? Does he get lasagna meals? Sometimes, yeah. 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 Sometimes if they're eating lasagna, they'll say, come, them they'll, have yep, they've food. done that lots of times, yeah. So yeah. we're really lucky we have a good support worker, but unfortunately, it's hard to get, you know, it's uh, the government and stuff yeah, and qualifying, that. you know, sometimes some people don't qualify and they really need it, yeah. yeah. It can be very stressful for the yeah. family and very stressful for um, uh, for the workers too. Yeah, it's that a hard job. Out, it's a very hard job. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. Yes, they, there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. So it's really good to find a good person who is conscientious, does a good job, and cares about what he does. You know. And I, I watch them. You know, from the. Uh, uh, retirement home that I live in and I watch what has come in over the years and I've seen seen people like for example men uh, that are just fantastic caregivers mm -hmm. more than the women yes and it's a better fit for the men mm -hmm. and even they're, they're doing okay with the women but um, they're really uh, they're kind of like taller or stronger or yeah. whatever and uh, sometimes it works better when you think of this stereotype that only women are the caregivers, I've seen amazing uh, personal care workers that are men. Yeah. And um, they, th they think it's a calling. It's not you have a to love them. what you do, yeah. It has to be something you enjoy doing, and uh, or else, you know, you don't get good care. The patient does not get good care, so it's important to get a good personal support worker. And... Um, you know, there was uh, in, in the in the uh, research. It shows that what do aging parents want more than most? And what came out over and over again, both genders, personal relationships with people they care about. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. was true for both genders. Do you think that's true within? With is it important for if you, you see both parents? Do you think that this whole thing of like your mom has a daughter, uh, mm -hmm. you. Uh, do you think your dad feels the same way which, about his, his kids, you, your brothers, to have personal relationships with? Or is it different? It's different. Yeah, my, it's different. My father, in, their gener in his culture, they're just a little bit more cold, like not as affectionate. So it's harder for them to reach out to their children and ask for help. So it's hard. Sometimes you don't know things are um, that might be going on, especially mentally with their health. If they're depressed or they don't share it and they won't talk to someone, then that can be a real problem. Yeah. In terms of cognitive, um, how, let's start with Dad first. Cognitively, how would you describe him? He has the 
memory of an elephant. He still will remember anything okay. from years and years ago. His memory is still really, really good. Long-term memory. Yeah. Unfortunately, he always remembers the bad stuff that you've done. Okay. <laughs> so, so he remembers yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, no, no. I, sti- right now, we're lucky that um, he has all his faculties. And uh, I know it's hard because I have an uncle who is suffering from dementia and mm. possibly Alzheimer's. We don't know yet. And that's very, I see him and his situation with his wife, and it's very difficult once, you know, um, a patient becomes, a, or a mother, father, um, cognitively has problems. It's very difficult. Okay, absolutely. And how about mom? Mom is still good. Yeah, she still has all her faculties. Yeah, she's still, she's still good. Yeah. Does she ever, um, I, I mean, I've never met mom, but... Does she ever give you advice like, Philomena, you should do this or that? You shouldn't, you know, the kind of stuff that mom says. Oh, yes. I, I'm still, I'm 53 years old, and she's still trying trying to, uh, you know, give me advice. And uh, but it comes from the heart. She just wants Absolutely. to make sure that I go on a good track and that I'm taken care of. So, so she's still caring about you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're still, they, they've... They've chartered my future. I mean, they've made sure that as I'm growing older, that I'm taken care of. Mm -hmm. So they've already, like, purchased a plot for me to be buried in, you know. So that's unusual. Some cultures, that's unusual. But um, because of my work situation and my disability and not being able to work so much, um, they want to make sure that I'll have a place to go when I die. So Amazing. It's yeah, a, that's very. It's a. It's a great thing that they did. Yeah. So they they still take care of me. You know, parents always take care of their kids, even when they get older. Yeah. A lot, a lot of them seem to be that way. Um, have they shown any interest in terms of anything like crafts, um, C C R A F T S or anything? bingo or anything like that, either one of them? My mom likes to go to a social club every week at the church. That's that's her escape for my dad, like just at two hours where she can go and they play bingo or cards or do different uh, activities there. And, um, and now that it's spring and summer, the garden is uh, the priority. Planting the garden is what they'll be, my mom will be doing. Oh, and she's going to have to do it all by herself. They used to do it together? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, they were really good gardeners. and uh, But the last couple of years, my mom's done it all by herself. And awesome. it's, uh, it's a lot, a lot of work. Yeah. What kind of flowers? Oh, no, they Plants? plant um, vegetables, like oh, vegetables. tomatoes and oh, cucumbers awesome. and lettuce and all that stuff. Yeah. So she's still doing that. That's she's fantastic. still planting, yeah, still digging the garden. <laughs> Are there any grandchildren in the family? Oh, lots of grandchildren. I think 11 grandchildren and three great-grandchildren right now. Yeah, so they have a big family. They've got a lot. Do they have any siblings that are still alive? Yes, my mother has her three brothers are still alive. And unfortunately, my father's only sister had passed away about 10 years ago. So he's alone. In terms of uh, the whole access to wheels trans, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, the need to be able to get out and about, um, do they, in a sense, uh, go by wheels trans to go to doctor's appointments, to go to f- social clubs? Well, no. My mother walks there. She does a lot of walking. It's about a 15-minute walk, so she'll walk to the social club. She still drives, which is really, really a great thing for her to have her license still. So they drive to appointments. But my father also got his wheel trans application, so we can we have taken the wheel trans to some appointments when uh, when it was downtown or somewhere we didn't know that was you know easier to take wheel trans to so how did he respond to not being able to drive anymore oh that was hard for my father my father drove his whole life he was a driver he drove a truck for his whole uh, career and uh, you know taught all his kids to drive and uh, losing that control was very um, was very hard for him for sure not being able to drive well, Philomena, you've been a great guest, uh, very articulate. I appreciate your 
your uh, information you shared with me today, and uh, it will be a, a real benefit for other people to hear our podcast because it's things that affect a lot of people's lives. There's more seniors, boomers. We're both baby yeah. boomers, but there's more seniors than ever. And thank you very much for coming on the show today. Oh, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank I you. enjoyed it. Thank you very Great. much. A special mention to the Disability Channel for providing this amazing opportunity for us to speak about these topics which impact our community. The Disability Channel is an innovative media company that provides employment opportunities within the area of digital media. All of us are participants of the Digital Ventures Program, which provides digital skills, upgrade courses, and on-the-job paid learning experience for people with diverse abilities. To learn more, visit www.thedisabilitychannel.ca and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Follow on Facebook and Twitter. The Disability Channel, showcasing abilities.